It's six thirty-two. It's six thirty-two. So why don't we and we have a quorum? So let's go ahead and and start the meeting. Uh, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. And uh, the first thing is the approval of the of the uh, minutes from June third. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Sure, I move to approve the minutes. Uh, do we have a second? Yep, I'll second that. Okay, and is there any discussion? Okay, um, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. And John, how about you, John? Yep, I'm an aye. Okay. And um, opposed? And abstain, I'm gonna abstain because I wasn't there. So the minutes are, are approved. Do CJ, do we have anybody um, for public comment? Nope, uh, nobody in the waiting room. Okay, okay. So we move on to the scenic resource appendix. Uh, do we have a motion to, motion to approve uh, the scenic resources inventory? I approve. Well, first we got to have a motion. And um, just to clarify, Tom, is this? Will be this be the recommendation for the natural resources inventory as well as the scenic resources inventory appendix as well? Yes, yes. Good point. So yes, a motion to uh, approve both the uh, natural resources inventory and the scenic resources inventory. So, do we have a motion, Todd? I move to approve both those things, the, okay. the, the inventory, yeah. And do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. As long as I'm allowed to do that, okay. Okay, all in favor of approving both the scenic resources inventory and the natural resources inventory? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. Uh, Tom, just for clarity, um, who's calling in from 4131? Uh, it's Karen. I, I can't get on my computer right now, but I'll listen. Hi, Karen. Hi, welcome. Hey. Great. Okay. So, uh, I, I sent out uh, Karen's last uh, version last night, and I believe that's going to be the final version. So we're so we're all set. Look great. So this is going to go before the town board uh, at their July meeting. All right, that is great. Uh, thank you, everybody, for putting this all together. Um, I think it came out quite well. So uh, we're, we're, we're all set then. And I'm fairly confident that uh, the town board's going to approve it. We have not received any... Um, negative input from anybody on the planning board or the town board, as far as I know. Okay, well, so that's a done deal. Thanks again, that, um, I think it, it came out well. Uh, CJ, in the future, if we want to amend it in any way, like put in, higher quality pictures or something like that, what, what would that involve? It uh, would just uh, involve uh, a new version of the document. So it could be the, I don't know, call it 
2023 update or 2023 version or something mm -hmm. like that. And it can be something of a living document too. So yeah, uh, this is just okay. as it is currently this kind of static snapshot at this very moment, that's what's being uh, approved, but it can, it can certainly be amended. Absolutely. Okay. And then we will just reapprove it uh, with, uh, with the amendments added. I guess I just, I want to say on the record, uh, special kudos to, to Tom, Robin, and Karen, who really contributed a lot to the document. And um, so thanks for all of your work. Absolutely. I wanted to add my thanks too. I did very little. I really appreciate all the work. Well, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the whole, whole deal. So yeah, it's a, it's now it's a great, space, great baseline document. Yeah, um, I, I've, I've looked at some of the uh, scenic resource inventories from bigger towns with lots more money and uh, they're definitely a lot more spiffy, but they have paid staff and all of that. Um, so this is for, for us, I think this, this, was, this came out really well. All right, hooray. Okay. So the next topic, progress towards becoming a conservation board. So this is what's probably gonna take the most time tonight. Um, there's talk of, so what, what would be the timeline for this CJ? Well, it really depended on what the scope of work that you wanted to come up with is essentially. Sorry if everyone's having video trouble. I think it's because I'm the host and uh, I'm inside the blue line tonight. So uh, I don't know how, how uh, clear this video is going to be or audio even. Um, Fine. So yeah, it really, you know, I, I, I think I heard um, some members express some, uh, you know, admiration of some other kind of notable open space inventories. I think a good place to start could be um, just an examination of kind of a sampling of different open space inventories that have been done um, throughout the state and kind of see where you want to go with this. Um, like I said, don't be afraid of uh, of going big just because of budget. Um, the money we can get, um, that's a little bit of the easier part. We do have to think ahead and we would have to scope the project out, but um, there's definitely money uh, available to be able to do um, you know, cool projects like an open space index. So um, I think uh, Karen had circulated one that was, I can't remember what municipality it was from, but it was pretty spiffy. So it's really up to you guys and that's something we can work through, through together. Well, I so this is this is Karen. I've got I've got one concern um, that I just want to state, uh, you know, up front, and that is that, you know, even if we have a, um, you know, consultants that can come in and do the, you know, do the the heavy lifting, in looking over the. Um, the document that, that Carrie, you sent around, I really am wondering about what sort of capacity we have as a committee to review all of the things that would be required for all of the, you know, the town board, the planning board, or the zoning board of appeals, all of this stuff that we would have to be on. I mean, I know, I know for one, I can't take on more and I feel like I've, you know, given as much as I, you know, out of my week as I can for this, for this work, but it just seems to me that it, it bumps up the, the things that we need to be on top of as a committee with a very, very clear time limit because we're answering to review schedules. So that, I mean, I, I'd be really interested in what other people's thoughts are on that. I was thinking exactly the same thing. Um, just, I mean, just being involved in the council here, here I barely feel like I've enough time to do much to contribute, you know, anything as far as a lot of action group involved in it. And it, Sounds like this is, you know, 
many times more, um, you know, gonna, involved. So I don't know. And I don't really know what the push is to, to go from a council to a board, how important that really is, um, you know, within this group or, you know, anywhere else. And I'll just add, I think having people like John and Heather on are, is super important. So if they're having concerns, that's the concerns I listen to, or Karen, sorry, John and Karen. Well, you know, I mean, one thing, one thing, I mean, I can say what, what the push is, is that so that we can have um, more environmental oversight on the projects that really, really need them. You know, I, there's a great reason for, you know, for, for doing that, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's a question very much of capacity. <laughs> I would say some of the most, if I can just kind of chime in here, I would say some of the most notable projects that are going to be coming along in the next, call it two years, say maybe we scope out an open space index and then that kind of list of work that the town board has given the CAC as part of that enabling resolution. Say it takes like 18 to 24 months to really finish that, right? The most notable projects I think that are coming up in the next two years are going to be solar for the most part. I think will be utility scale solar. And you've done the great work. I'll be able to hand that off to the Office of uh, Renewable Energy Siting. Thanks to you all. They'll be able to hand them that scenic resources inventory. Um, and the planning board has said already uh, that they any type one action is going to be referred to you anyway. Um, that's as a matter of kind of informal planning board policy. So if some major project does come in, you're going to be included in that review. You don't need board standing to do that. That's not required. So CJ, you, um, you know, we, we had talked about this earlier. Uh, really, the only increase in authority that we get by becoming a, uh, a um, conservation board is, is we have authority to review type one actions, right? Uh, to yeah. be mandated to be included in environmental review. Um, but the planning board has already taken the action of uh, already stating that they would refer any type one action to you already. Um, so that would come to your attention besides. I'm not saying there's not good reason to um, become a conservation board if that's really um, you know near and dear to your heart to do. Um, uh, just that I think that we could could take, um, I think we could take some time to kind of scope out the open space index. Um, I'm bringing a new planner on board who's got uh, some great GIS skills and some time that we can put into that. Um, and so I think, you know, we're kind of, you're at a tipping point of kind of your work plan coming up of what you kind of want to scope out. And I think we really could do a really nice open space index project. Um, you know, and take the time to kind of really establish ourselves and maybe also, um, you know, build up more on the financing side of it, do a report kind of like that town, Beth, town of Bethlehem report. I think that would be really awesome to kind of help the town get their head around the funding mechanisms for open space acquisition, and then also develop a, a more robust monitoring program, you know, because the county's not going to want to keep, uh, you know, monitoring um, even the easements that they hold, I think they're really hoping to hand that off to somebody besides themselves or Finger Lakes Land Trust. I think they're really looking to the town to step up our acquisition ability. Um, so, you know, I defer to you guys and what you want, um, but, you know, and what you want out of your work plan, I guess, is the short one. So, Karen, uh is your concern that um, doing the open space index is going to be too much? Oh, no, that's not at all my concern. My concern is being a board. I think we can okay. do the open space index even if we're a council, but I think given the capacity that we have right now to act um, 
with the pressure of the other schedules of the other, you know, we have to keep, we have, we have to keep up with, you know, well, there's a planning board meeting coming up. There's a, you know, town board meeting coming up. We have to have something prepared. I just feel like we're too young of an organization to really have our feet under us to be taking on that level of, um, I don't know, it feels like it feels like very demanding responsiveness. Now, I, you know, I think I think doing the inventory is a great idea, and and I I think it's it would be interesting to think about uh, decoupling those two those two goals. You know, doing being a board and and doing the inventory because I think we can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, CJ, but we can do the inventory regardless of what our status is, right? Yeah, and and uh, by the way, the open space index is the foundational, wow. is the kind of culmination document to be able to petition the town board for conservation board status, with the NRI being like the, the foundation of that document. If that makes any sense, you can kind of see see how they kind of build on each other. And I'll put a little link in the box there. For you. So in, in, in terms of actual uh, responsibilities to the town, again, if we become a board, the only thing it, it requires us to do, at least this is my understanding of it, is that any type one action, we, we have to have input. And as CJ already said, the planning board has asked us to have input on any type one action anyways. So, so I'm not sure it's going to be a, um, a lot more work. Uh, but again, I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a bridge we don't have to cross right away. I, I think one of our focuses now is, is this open space index. Well, am, I, am I hearing that um, if we work toward becoming a conservation board by making progress on the open space index, that we could potentially have more clout, not necessarily more work responsibilities than we already do, and could potentially... Carrie, I missed the last end of, the end of that sentence there could be potentially more effective because we have more more clout mm -hmm. and we don't necessarily have more work given that right now type one actions um would come They're to minimal us. and the conservation board type one actions would come to us like we're going to be commenting on every single project before the planning board as a conservation board no that's that's not what we're going to be doing right in fact, I don't know, CJ, when was the last type one project in the town? It was before I got here. So yeah. I don't know. So they're 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 rare. And 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 as far as the solar goes, I mean I, <laughs> that may be totally controlled by the state. I mean, we can have input, but the town oh, itself may not have little may have little say in what happens. But what you did with the scenic resources inventory is a document that I can hand over to Office of Renewable Energy Siting and say, please have applicants consider this as part of their application, have them address this in the exhibits. Mm -hmm. Like that's that will be valuable uh, in that process. Mm -hmm. um, may give the town, you know, some leverage. We don't know yet because this process is brand new from the state. So, but I think that it was absolutely valuable and well timed. Um, so what it's worth I, I, th I think it was really great and I'm happy you could all uh, coordinate to get that work done I really appreciate it so so CJ and Tom what's the difference between an advisory council and a, a board what what, what uh, it, it, Heather's or Karen's concerned about extra effort and you seem to be saying like oh it's the same thing we're just like going to change our name what's what what are, what are we actually voting on well, well, go ahead, CJ. You know more about it than I do. 
Oh, uh, no, I was just, um, I wasn't aware if there was a, a vote tonight on, and maybe there. Oh, is, maybe there isn't. Just not looking uh, at the agenda. I, I think it's a discussion. Oh, just the progress. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, so um, think of it this way, like the, uh, the natural resources inventory is considered to be kind of the foundation for the open space index, which then prioritizes open areas for acquisition. I think the CAC, um, and I think uh, Karen's really alluding to this as well, can build up capacity both for acquisitions and monitoring, um, helping the town and convince the town that open space is worth investing in, right? Either by um, a, an array of different financing instruments, um, be included in seeker, uh, meaning environmental quality review uh, for all type one actions, but not necessarily be um, uh, mandated to be part of an environmental review. Um, so I think in some ways you get the best of both worlds for right now, you know, you could kind of scope out the open space index and how snazzy you want to make that. Um, we can come up with a budget for what it is that you want to do. And then when the open space index is, uh, or the open space inventory is complete, uh, you can petition at that point to become a conservation board if you so choose. But there's not an enormous benefit. The only the only real key benefit would be standing in environmental quality review. Okay, and okay. So CJ, my, let me. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you, CJ. No, no, you're fine. It sounds like you're saying the council can ask for a budget, but a board would be able to ask for a budget with more leverage behind it. Is that what you're saying? Oh uh, no, I uh, I only meant that. Um, uh, that I'm, I'm thinking in terms of, uh, I had originally heard uh, upon circulation of some various municipal open space inventories that have been done by other municipalities. I, I heard like kind of an excitement of like, oh, wow, these look really nice. And ooh, these are snazzy maps. And oh, that would be nice to have that kind of graphic design. As we all know, that takes time and money and energy, right? So the thing that I'm going to be working on this budget season is working on getting you the reserve line that you're supposed to have already as part of the resolution that um, created this body, right? Um, but this uh, conservation board only just elevates your status formally in environmental quality review, which the town has already done informally. So in some ways, I could agree with Karen, you know, you kind of have the best of both worlds right now. If you have the time and capacity to comment, and really get involved, you can. And if you're working on something else, you can just kind of monitor the progress of uh, various actions in the town, kind of how we keep you up to date. Um, you don't necessarily have to be involved, um, if that makes sense. All right, Tom, you have anything to add to that? Well, I, I mean, I think this uh, this discussion on, on becoming a, a board as opposed to a council I mean, nothing really has to be decided um, tonight. It's probably more important that we decide that we want to do the open space index. And then over time, we can figure out how badly we want to be a board and how much difference <laughs> when we learn more, we can, we can, we can yeah, I, uh, decide yeah, yeah. whether we want to go that route. OK, that, that, that's great. So, so if I'm reading Karen right, and Karen, please step in. Um, the, 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 the only um, impediment is like how much more in effort is required of the group of people who are here tonight, right? That's, that's the big thing, right? Like, are we required to be at meetings or whatever, whatever it is? I don't know what it is, but that seems to be like the only impediment for changing us from what we are now to a board. Am I reading that right? I, I mean, I think that's what I think that is what I'm saying. I, I would just prefer as as part of this group when we come on the scene with more clout that we do it in a way that's totally solid and not, you know, flailing around and unaware that, for example, we, you know, we're not going to be able to make it to whatever. Oh, we'll always group. be flailing here. Don't worry about that. That's a, that's just yeah. a given. That's a given in this whole thing. You but know, uh, I want, but I want I, this I, to be I, one corner of my life where I'm not flailing. <laughs> well, all my all my corners are flailing. All twelve of them. But um, yeah, no, I'm I'm happy either ways, and and what and I'm happy to go along with whatever the group decides. Uh, John, what what is, what are your thoughts? Because you're you're like being silent on this. 
and you're actually a real farmer. <laughs> um, <clears throat> By the way, the corn looks great out our way. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, it does this year. <laughs> um, my main, like when I first read through things, I had the impression that pretty much everything that came through the board and the planning board that we were going to be responsible for going through tons mm -hmm. and tons of stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, just my ignorance on right, right. what we would actually be either requested or required, depending on our status, I guess, um, to be able to do. And then just, you know, whether, you know, I, I don't consider myself to have any expertise as to having anything other than an opinion on, you know, what we would want to do in any, on any particular uh, project, I guess. And I had no idea if I was the only one thinking that way or, you know, if everyone else was gung-ho for a board or, you know, kind of where anybody was on it. I let CJ and Tom pick that up, but yeah, I think, I think John, we're on, you and I are on here because of our special expertise and i don't think anybody's asking us for anything more than our insights from our perspective perspectives is that correct tom that sounds reasonable <laughs> we might ask you to do a few things <laughs> well i i think for tonight um so i'm hearing that um you know environmental quality reviews like you would do like a formal environmental assessment this is there our expert or inexpert opinions will be welcomed and valued <laughs> yeah i think that's true i mean there's there's enough expertise here that um i think people would consider our opinions worthwhile. Um, but, but again, I, I don't think any of this really has to be decided tonight. I think tonight we might want to just focus on, um, shall we forge ahead with this open space index uh, and try to keep the amount of work uh, limited so nobody's overwhelmed and I, I understand Karen's concern because she's got expertise that we all value and want a piece of <laughs> <laughs> well said <laughs> so Carrie do you have uh, any comments see if we could make some progress on deciding, okay, you know, are we going to pursue the OSI? And if so, what are some of the first steps that we will take? Oh, there's a, there's, oh, yeah. Well, do people here, are, are people here tonight, um, are they, they for this um, open space index? As, as our next big project? I think we need it as a foundational document so that Lansing has a sense of, well, what are our priority areas that we are going to preserve? Because right now we've inventoried things. We've, we've articulated um, views that are particularly spectacular, but when it, when it comes to an overarching picture um, and priority areas, we really don't have that. Let's, I'm missing something. So I, I, so I agree. I agree totally, Carrie, with what you just said. And Robin uh, just set up a thing about, you know, her expertise not necessarily being everything you'd want to see in this sort of a, of a group. Uh, I understand Karen as well, but I think this is actually a pretty rarefied group with a lot of expertise. So, um, and we're and we're covering a lot of different interests as well. So I I think I think this is maybe as good a group as you could get for this kind of a, a thing. So um, I, I'm i all in favor of the, of, the, of the open area index and I'm all in favor of, the, of making this 
be whatever it needs to be to be more have more official status. I'll go along with that. So what are some of the initial steps then uh, that we're going to want to do uh, to get that underway? When we had a uh, pre-meeting with CJ, as we um, have started doing for all of our meetings, um, you know, CJ was saying to us, well, as a CAC, you need funding if you're going to you know, proceed with the OSI because it is work and you know, we're a volunteer board and volunteer yeah, funding. Well, so there is funding uh, at, the, at the fingertips, potentially, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's not in the bank yet, but uh, it's very, very possible. Um, and we, we need to come up with a budget. So we need to have a sense of the scope of the OSI so that CJ can defend that and then proceed with um, helping to get us some funding. And obviously, you know, we can part of that process. Am I saying too much, CJ? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, you know, it's no, I don't shy away from grants and I don't uh, shy away from budgets because it's important to um, go after these things when they're available, which is um, uh, why I'm so grateful that the town authorized me to um, hire um, uh, another planner who's going to take over all development review for the town, which is great, which will free me up to do a lot more for um, all of you, including if you, we take some time over the summer here, um, we might be able to hit the September 24th Park Foundation deadline. Um, Park Foundation has been extremely gracious and um, has um, uh, funded uh, some stormwater uh, analysis and as well as a multimodal transportation uh, assessment for the town center lands and um, uh, they've been very supportive and I have no reason to think that they would not s support another application that the town made um, about you know through their um, you know kind of um, sustainable I think it's called sustainable Ithaca but um, uh, basically any municipality in Tompkins County that wants to do work like you're talking about um, they will fund that I just need a scope of work and we would probably um, want to have that vetted by um, a consulting firm who does this type of work. Um, and then, of course, uh, it'd be great to have um, some eyes on it from folks who have some GIS background as well, since obviously it's a lot of mapping. Um, and get a budget together of what we think um, this is going to cost and then, uh, you know, ask for the money. I and mean, we can get the money in the budget up front knowing that we're going to be reimbursed. Um, I think... Um, you know, from the grants that have already um, won for the town, I think we have a track record of, you know, winning things and then getting the money. So that's, uh, yeah, that's a good thing. This is money that we have to compete for versus money that the town has set aside for the CAC that already exists. Well, yeah, that's right, um, Robin. Uh, just to jump in, I would say um, I would ask the town to um, create the reserve line that you're supposed to have, fund that, and then w uh, under the um, the acknowledgement or effort that we would make to essentially um, uh, getting that cost reimbursed through um, winning grants. Um, some are harder than others. Some are easier than others. Um, and that's why I mentioned, um, you know, developing that relationship with the Park Foundation um, and letting them know that we are putting uh, time and effort into to this kind of work here in the town of Lansing. I think that that's a, um, that's a really low hanging fruit and a great um, relationship to, um, you know, keep, keep pursuing for the type of work that you want to do here. So. Yeah, and I can speak to that too. I mean, Park Foundation is wonderful to work with. I've probably received 10 or 11 substantial grants from them um, over the last decade. And um, they, you know, they pay my salary. So um, I guess one of the questions too, and I, you know, I haven't really thought enough about this CJ in terms of, you know, scoping out the, whatever the plan of work would be for the, um, you know, for developing the inventory 
is that entirely a GIS exercise, or does that start getting into uh, focus groups and field work and all of these other components mm -hmm. that are not necessarily remote sensed? And if that's the case, that's a whole other level of organizing, um, meeting facilitation, uh, and, and which is, you know, the whole that the whole part of it is way more iterative and has uh, like this sociological component to it about inclusiveness and you know that sort of thing. So is that more for the plan, or is that part of the inventory as well? That's a really good question because it really depends on the scope that all of you want to do. Um, I think that you could go robust with that as robust as you wanted to on the public engagement piece. In fact we could write a request for proposal, put it out there on contract reporter, and then of course send it to selected firms, especially ones that had say the background in both, um, uh, maybe one firm might have you know, deep environmental and maybe mapping expertise, and then another firm would have experience in public engagement, right? So we can kind of, you know, with a decent enough budget, I think that we could do that. I mean, we could actually really do, um, uh, you know, a, a pretty robust open space um, index slash, you know, inventory. But, you know, again, I, I like you keep saying, going back to capacity, um, you know, I don't want to force that issue on you. I don't, you know, it's more like, you know, when the parks department came to me and said, hey, you know, how do we get money for things? You know, it was very easy for me to say, yes, we're going to do a plan because they have a parks and recreation department, right, that can help run that, you know, public engagement piece, they can help come up with the plan, they can help staff a committee. That's, um, you know, that was a very obvious, you know, choice to me to come up with the kind of pr pretty big budget plan, right. Um, Whereas this, you know, I, I really defer to all of you and where you see this going kind of long term, I'm kind of asking, you know, maybe step back a minute and think like, you know, what do you want to achieve? You know, like, where do you see this? Do you see Town of Lansing having a Conservation Advisory Council or Conservation Board with the true monitoring capacity equivalent to, you know, maybe not Finger Lakes Land Trust, but maybe, you know, with a, an equivalency for the town, right? I mean, I don't know. And I think these are kind of existential questions, you know, for, for all of you to kind of mull over. That probably went way too far. Oh, no, no, that, that was that was great, CJ. I mean, in my mind, yeah, we, we want to have as much monitoring as possible. I mean, Carrie and I are already working on, on monitoring together a little bit with, uh, with 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 a couple projects. It would be nice to have as much of that as possible, but um, yeah, we want to also not be seen as the uh. Uh, 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 the environmental Nazis that you know that, that the rest of the, the the town comes around and is, is against. So I think, I, I, and this is why I love this board because I think we're we're working with the stake with stakeholders, landowners, farmers, people that want development. All, all, everybody's everybody's on board, and so so I don't know where monitoring fits into that, but but um, yeah, let let's let's think big. Um, I think everybody wants. Lansing to stay as great as it is and, and, and maybe even be better. And so I don't think we're having any pushback on anything we've done or are doing, but yeah, let's let's stay open to be as good as we can be. Um, yeah, without having a particular agenda per se. Uh, I, I think what, what, what our, what, we're conservationists, right? This is the conservation of, uh, 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 committee. So, so let's, yeah, let's try and conserve everything that's great about, about, about Lansing. And I, I love the, 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 the document we just came up with, with all those great view, great views. Let's, let's stick with that sort of thing that makes everybody feel great about Lansing and, and kind of push that. So at the end, we're done. Well, I'll just say that you oh. know the the answer to your question, CJ, is largely in the the answers that people gave when they applied to be on the CAC. And I I think many of us said what Todd just said that we think Lansing's a beautiful place, and we noticed the development, 
and we would, you know, I can know for my part, I feel like I'd like Lansing to be thoughtful about future development. And um, if, if we don't uh, preserve land, it's gradually going to be developed. Um, so I agree, Todd, we really do need to work um, with many people in Lansing. Um, and I think we can do that. I, I really like this idea of a consultant who's an expert um, in involving stakeholders because um, th that is the way forward. Um, people getting on board with the, the vision of protecting farmland, you know, protecting open space. So, you know, I'd love to hear from other people about um, what their vision is. I've had more bluebirds this year than ever before. I want to keep that going. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, and just thinking about like the purpose of the open space inventory, as opposed to the scenic resources, scenic areas, is that we have yet to identify our priority conservation areas. And if we don't do that, then um, we can't really dis <laughs> we can't really prioritize how we're going to work, right? We we need my understanding is that we need to do this document because nothing we've done so far says that you know our top priority is uh, you know place X and our our next priority is conservation area Y, you know Salmon Creek Bird Sanctuary or um, the you know the waterfall or you know whatever the area is we have yet to say this is our top priority this is our next priority and then i'm if i'm hearing everything correctly that, that this document we need to do in order to make that a conservation document and not just a list of pretty areas or a scenic resources index with lots of nice soil maps and water tables and that kind of thing so we really are starting to get into the conservation priority areas Rob and I totally agreed, and that's why you, Tom, and Karen are so perfect for this group because it's it's not about an area, right? It's about a network of areas that fit together because because things don't just like I can have a bird feeder in my backyard, but that doesn't mean like I've made a a huge habitat. Like those those things move around, right? So where you, Tom, and Heather come together is like putting together like how do we look at the whole this whole big landmass and and knit it together to figure out what are the key conservation corridors and networks that 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 um, make this be a sustainable, you know, uh, ecosystem. And, um, and and so again, that's why I, I love this this group because you guys we have that expertise in hand. So um, it's a great point, Robin. And I and 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 we haven't addressed it. But I think as a group, we can come together, like, how do we communicate this to the, the, the community? Like, you know, please don't take out that hedgerow between field X and field Y because, I don't know, pheasants or what, I think pheasants are an exotic species. That's probably a bad, bad choice, but but, <laughs> right. but, 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 some, but some sort of grouse, maybe grouse, like, that, like that they need that, that thing to be in place or whatever. But um, I agree, Robin, and I think we're like, on the cusp of being there to putting that kind of a, a document you're talking about together. So, so um, today I, I looked at the, the Tompkins County, they don't call it an open space index, but it sounds like that's sort of what it is and, and what, what they were prioritizing. And, you know, for Lansing, it was you know the Salmon Salmon Creek area um, along the lake. Uh, basically, you know wherever you have water bodies is pretty critical. Fishing. <laughs> well, more than fishing. Um, I mean, S Salmon Creek is obviously they got a few birds in there too. I guess uh, <laughs> they probably have a lot of bluebirds. <laughs> But, but I mean that that's something. Maybe that's where we can start. Is is um, prioritizing uh, places where you have 
flowing water or the lake, things like that. Uh, cliff sides were, were part of it also. And, you know, when I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, that's, that pretty much makes, makes sense. You know, you, you focus on um, uh, wetland corridors and, and stream corridors and things like that. They're incredibly valuable, I think, in terms of wildlife habitat and the like. Um, so starting with, with what Tompkins County has come up with, I think we can start there and, and, and maybe expand some from there. Tom, are you referring to the unique natural areas or something else? Uh, no, it, it, I mean, that some of this was included in, you know, includes unique okay. natural areas, but it was, uh, I forget the name of the document. It was it was it was written in 2007, I believe, and um, you know, and, and it was for the whole county. And you know, in the, the southern part of the county, it was it was about preserving a lot of forest land, you know, and the whole green necklace concept. But for our area, they were more focused on the lake and uh, Salmon Creek area. Uh, and you know wetlands in general. Could you send us a link to that document? Yeah, if I can find it again. Yeah, I'll 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 do that. That'd be great. And I, you know, I would say, you know, for me, I think in in large part because I live right in the middle of it, the Salmon Creek Valley is so significant. You know, it's considered. A, it's one of Audubon's important bird areas. The, the whole thing is um, a unique natural area, which we expanded from something that was like only about 50 or 60 acres to something over 900 now. I mean, it's really been recognized for both the uplands and the, and the stream corridor. And it, you know, it, it is outside of Connecticut Hill or maybe even beyond Connecticut Hill, it's, it's the nicest continuous forested tree canopy, I think, in the county. So, you know, we have that going for us also here. And, you know, we can't, um, we can't designate the entire town <laughs> as, as, you know, the inventory spot, but we can, I think we can look to these other documents that other organizations have already um, you know, called out as, as key. We also look to our comprehensive plan for um, some basic guidance. Mm -hmm. TJ, where are you? Because that looks like a, that looks a gorgeous, a gorgeous place where you are. I want to come and join you. I'll bring a bottle of wine. <laughs> this is my uh, voice channel's place um, on White Lake. Matter yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, oh, oh, later on, that's nice. Yeah, I'm not gonna come that far, but yeah. Okay. It's it's not bad. It's uh, it's just over the blue line, but it feels far. Um, you know, one thing I want to say too is that, you know, I know this is probably seem like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of work to feel like <laughs> not going that far, um, but um. You know, long term, you know, thinking about this, you know, in a matter of a decade, you know, we could be, you know, we're really fortunate to uh, be in a county where the county level assessment is done. And I think, you know, with a little creative accounting and some relationships with the city and maybe town of Ithaca, that they might even like to see something like a transfer of development rights program. You know, if Lansing could share in the tax revenue, but not necessarily have the development, somebody might be interested in that. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot of kind of long-term pieces that can that can come together over this, you know, this will be a decades long, you know, overnight success. Um, and I think, um, you know, you, that all these little footprints and all these little like single building blocks that you're putting together are really gonna come together and be, you know, something. Um, and especially like the, we were just talking about the prioritization piece. That's something that we can really get some great help with as part of the uh, open space um, 
index is really honing in, especially when somebody, you know, somebody might offer to donate land to the town. Somebody might want to apply for a purchase of development rights program, maybe through the FPIG, right? Like the FPIG is open right now, uh, the Farmland Protection Implementation Grants. Um, you know, we reach out to those people and, and what you've already done with Cornell Orchards actually is a great example of what CAC should be doing. I mean, you're actively lobbying and being aware, um, letting people know that you're out there and also that you want to work with them. Like, that's a very strong message. And, and I think just um, that lobbying, continuing to build on these foundational documents and then, you know, going after some serious money to do the kind of plan that you want to do. I think that's, you know, I think you're, you're on the right track, you know. My humble opinion. Speaking of uh, the Cornell Orchards, that letter has gone out to Cornell and they've acknowledged that they've received it. So we'll see where that goes. So not to get off topic, is, is the Kingdom Farm going to become all solar panels? Does anybody know? John, John, what do you know about the Kingdom Farm uh, acquisition? I know that the owner of Kingdom Farms is very tight-lipped. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's, thank you for nothing, John. Yeah, as been usual. Us, but he won't claim. <laughs> okay, it. it would be a huge. That would be a huge solar farm if it went in. But uh, okay, good enough. I, I thought so, it was an organic farm. Now is it not? Part of it is. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So I sat in on a, 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 a workshop or whatever you want to call it, a Zoom meeting uh, yesterday about uh, solar. And uh, this guy from Albany is claiming that, uh, you know, farmers can, well, you can, you can generate 30 or $40,000 of electricity on an acre of land, whereas, um, you know, farmers can't make that kind of money growing crops. And this guy was claiming uh, one per, using 1% 1 of the farmland in New York State, you could, you could generate huge amounts of electricity. It was, it was interesting. Anyways, you know, I don't know if his numbers are 100% correct. Some, and I can't remember, was it somebody from this group that sent out the, the video by Pete Larson? I think is one of your neighbors, right, Tom? Pete Larson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he did a, yeah. he did a, a great little thing about right. using marginal land for, for, for solar. Um, uh, and then went around, <laughs> including on my own land, and sort of said, here's where everything's going to go in, and it's going to look crappy. But, but um, yeah, it's worth watching if nobody's seen it. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think I had sent that around. And he's a he's a thoughtful guy. He's a he's a he's a he's a great great guy. I I yeah. mean Tom lives right next to him. I went to school with him. He's he's a good guy, isn't he, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to move us off of this OSI topic, um, Tom, you're going to try to send around a link. Yes. These document. Yes. And, um, I'm proposing to kind of take another look. Um, at the comprehensive plan, just to see if there are any little gems or pieces of guidance in there. I know it's probably very general, but um, are, are there one or two people who want to move this forward? I would be yeah. willing to help with it. Me Can you too. clarify what you're asking to move forward? The hiring of a consultant or the budget or the well i think the first we, we need to have examples of uh what different uh, open space indexes um in terms of the scope of them so some that are more narrow in scope and some that are wider in scope so that we as a cac have a sense of well, what are we aiming for and then um, how can we plan on a budget for what we're aiming for because i think that without that sense, it's going to be difficult to move forward. We, we really won't have a goal in mind. Um, gotcha. And if we can look at examples and um, and say that we're going to build on other core documents like the one that Tom was referencing, I think it would give us a place to stand. And then, you know, obviously, if, if we could do a little bit of this work um, before the next CAC meeting, 
then we could have some examples for people to look at. But that's just a suggested way of, of moving forward on this stuff. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think um, we should all try and find something about uh, open space indexes and, and send it to everybody and we can get a little educated on this. There is also, um, there was a DEP webinar about open space indices that was very, very useful and I can, I can look that up as well. So I think I sent it around before, but it's probably uh, more timely now even. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Those sound like great ideas uh, to, to get get it, get us started with this. Uh, need to understand what uh, what the territory is like, what the possibilities are. Hey, just think, think about what we have to do by when. Um, we mentioned the Park Foundation's deadline of September 24th. Um, so that's only a couple months away. Is it possible for you to send out some type of, um, I don't know if they, they don't tend to issue much of an, an RFA or anything, but do you have any more information on that? Or is that, would that be sort of kept under, under wraps? No, the Park Foundation has an online, you just have to set up an account. They have an online um, uh, electronic submission proposal thing, and you can also do it as a Word document. The, the online one has about five or six questions, and they have a word limit of, like, it's under a thousand. I mean, there's maybe one piece that's a thousand, and everything else is a 250 word limit. It's a very streamlined application, um, if it's assuming it's the same one that I was using. Okay. So it's not like we need to be reading pages of their criteria and things like that. It's just much more simple. It's infinitely easier than the CFA. Okay. And it's easier to get re I mean, it's it leaps and bounds ahead of anything that we would apply for through the CFA. Okay. Um, I can also send some samples around. Um, uh, this month is going to be pretty busy because uh, we've got the, speaking of the CFA, it's due at the end of July. Um, so after that, um, if you'd like to dedicate your, you know, August and September meetings to working through, looking at examples um, and then fleshing out a scope of work, you know, then we can put that application in for the end of September, basically. So. Um, okay. I think that that's a reasonable time frame um, that will also dovetail nicely with the wrapping up the grant that Park Foundation is already funding for the town, and it'll be kind of a nice, um, you know, uh, next step of oh well we now have this other you know great project. Um, so I think um, you know if you want to use the um, August and September meetings for that, I'll be much more available um, for you now and have a little more mental space to to give um, to this, um, so I can really help you scope that out and um, you know help advocate for for money as well so i'm happy to do that great well we're, we're counting on you cj you're you're an awesome part of this committee whether you believe it or not thank you i should do my best uh, that's all i can do yes yeah. yeah, cj su super key i'm gonna be gone most of august i'm road tripping with my family so i won't be available but if, if something comes out earlier rather than later i'm happy to give uh Feedback to Tom and Carrie and, and CJ and whoever else wants to hear anything from me, but um, I probably won't be doing much in August. Well, it sounds like if this this month we could get a lot of reading material and, and really really begin to get an idea of what this territory is like and uh, what what are these things, what do we like about uh, having ours be, and. Uh, and we can really start to come to grips with that in our next meeting if we can get some materials and really get our teeth into them. Hey, John, I just want to say it's so good to have you back on the back in the Zoom, uh, whatever this is, the Brady Bunch screen here. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> good. So before people have any thoughts of getting off, we still have this uh, presentation to the Lansing's Planning Board 
as a as a possible topic to decide on for July 12. So what are we presenting again? Well, we were going to um, begin to build our connection to the planning board um, and explain to them what we have been doing and how we can be an asset to them and, and how as we proceed with this OSI, um, they're going to love us for our service um, to them because of our extensive expertise as Todd has already outlined. Uh, that, that was the thinking um, and we were thinking, you, I think CJ was hoping, I'll put it that way, that one or two people from the CAC might be willing to appear magically at the, the July 12th meeting as faces of the CAC and spokespeople just to say, here's what we have done. We, you know, you and I did this, Tom, for the, uh, the town board where we, you know, described these uh, at the NRI and the, the SRI. And now maybe we could let the planning board know that they have given us kudos on those and we're moving forward with this uh, open space index. It sounds to me like Carrie, it sounds like you and Je you and Tom already have a stick down. Why didn't you guys do it? <laughs> well, I'm on the planning board, so it might not be appropriate for me. <laughs> I'm on vacation July 12th, like you're going to be in August. But because you're being gone in August, you might be perfect for July. <laughs> so. I'd be willing to do it, but but yeah, I. Uh, I would nominate anybody except me if, uh, if that's an option. I think it would be great. We want we want people that are. You, you, what what is it when you look for those certain species that are like um, the charismatic species, right? And and so what what's our charismatic? Uh, and I don't I don't think I'm that 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 guy. So uh, uh, <laughs> I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think John and Robin would be perfect. John John Fleming and and, and Robin Bailey would be. I think that's who I nominate. I was just going to say your description of someone that was emphatic was going to get me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what time's the meeting, Tom? Uh, on the 12th? Uh, they start at 6.30. <laughs> and the idea, we were thinking of somewhere between five and 10 minutes. Something yeah, it doesn't have to be long. It's the kind of thing that a professor could probably do, you know, snip, snap. They could talk off the top of their heads. <laughs> By, by the way, the planning board meetings are now uh, in person. I mean, you, you can Zoom, but I think it's much more effective to be there. And, um, you know, show a couple slides and then say, you know, this is what we've been up to and what our next steps are. It doesn't have to be anything um, complicated. So... Let's see, um, here are some notes that I took when we had our meeting with Andrew and CJ, because we were, we were talking about, okay, how do we move forward? Um, and I wrote down, overall, people will go along with it, make it clear we want to keep things moving along. They're very busy. They don't want to be slowed down, and we have to get our point across. Uh, we will try to help expedite things uh, as we move into the future with them. Um, what else do we talk about? Yep, and maybe maybe just reiterate with them that we're obviously currently a CAC, um, but we're beginning to take steps toward becoming a conservation board. And as for as far as our responsibilities, they will remain largely the same. Um, and type one action is what we talked about there. CJ, was there anything else that we decided would be important to convey to the the planning board? Um, when a CAC rep meets with them? Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, reminding them of the work uh, done on the natural resources inventory and now the scenic resource inventory, given that it's in front of the town board now, um, it could just be, you know, kind of an informal conversation to say, you know, we're here for you, you need anything for environmental review. And oh, by the way, um, you know, uh, 
if you liked any of the maps uh, that were prepared as part of that scenic uh, research inventory or want to know more, uh, we can provide more information for you. Um, I can say that they, I think, would like to consider the Cuba Lake uh, Scenic Byway uh, Overlay District and uh, the geographic extent, but, um, you know, I think maybe I went too narrow or maybe too broad, and um, I think maybe they might appreciate a discussion um, with directly with the CAC rather than me kind of playing telephone uh, with them about um, their um, desire for, um, you know, for some kind of overlay district in that area. Um, I, I think they're still kind of fleshing that out, but I think anything that can add to that conversation is, you know, worthwhile, even if it's just informal, I think, you know, just, you know, just a chat. They're also going to be talking about short-term rentals and who knows what else. So um, this will just be kind of a snippet of their, um, of the meeting they've got coming. So, um, you know, no pressure, it's not a high pressure. I think just, just showing a couple of slides from uh, the, the scenic resource inventory and, and from the natural resources inventory, you know, as examples of, you know, what we're trying to do and, and how, we're, what our next step is. That's all Todd, that we would really need, I think. Would you want me to send you the PowerPoint that I um, used for the town board? Would that be helpful? Who, who, Assuming you. To whom are you talking? I <laughs> send it to Tom. Sure, he needs it. No, no, no. I'm. I can't. I'm on the planning board. I don't think it'd be appropriate. <laughs> If you're talking to me, Carrie, sure, I would love to see it. I'd love to know, like, what are my two or three talking points? As as CJ just said, it sounds like this is a five minute yeah. uh, dog and pony show, and, and 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 who's the more attractive person that will be uh, uh, with me that can actually like make everybody like think this is a good idea? Is it just me? You guys are you guys are sunk if it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to do it. Yeah, see, uh, Carrie, send it to me. I'm happy to do it, and um, I'll do my best. I'll try and like make sure I'm shaved and and and, and bathed before I go in. No need. C J, <laughs> can you get Todd on the agenda, or does Tom? I mean, who who does that? Uh, yeah, we'll just add him to the uh, working. Look at that. CJ, look at the power she has. Uh, <laughs> look, at, look at that. She I do this. I serve at the pleasure of the of the planning board, um, of course. Um, okay, so I got one. I got one question though, and and this is maybe I didn't quite understand this on the last call, but wasn't there some concern? on the planning board that the CAC would become too powerful and interrupt the planning board's uh, ability to do their work. I think was that that was what the concern was. Um, so I, maybe in thinking through the talking points, you might wanna have that in your back pocket in case that does come up. I, it may not, but Tom, am I remembering that correctly that you had some? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, that was, I mean, that that was before the CAC was even formed. There was concern about, well, you know, are these guys going to just slow down, you know, the process for us? But and the, I, I'm, and the answer I'm not, is, I'm sure that I'm not sure that sentiment is there now. Okay, that's good because you know the answer to that is yes, if the process needs to be slowed down, it's for a good reason. And we're a peer organization to the planning board, you know, looking out for the best of Lansing. So I just, um, yeah, just, just trying to, you know, make sure that we've got Todd's back there and nothing comes out of left field. Well, well I mean, we're, we're there to help the planning board. As long as they understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I, and and when they see me, they 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 recognize we have no power at all. So uh, that, that's gonna be not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we are we're, we're. I think we can we can help them more than hinder them. Um, sure. You need to go to the party, Tom. They want you. They're saving me some food. 
so it's okay. Okay, we good with this one? Todd, we really, really twisted your arm. Thank you. No, that, that's yeah. fine. In time, you're on Van Alstern Road. Is that right? I just want to know yeah. where, where to go get dinner. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I'm, no, I'm actually up by Auburn. I'm at my grandson's birthday party. Oh, God damn, that's too far. Okay, never mind. <laughs> We do need to let you go. Uh, web page progress. I can I skip to that, Tom? Uh, not yes, yes. Go it. ahead. I just so I I would love to have the blessing of the CAC to give the NRI and the SRI to Jenna, so that can be posted on the pages that we have for the town, um, the CAC pages. And we've been in communication about this. Do we have a yeah. thumbs up that those documents can go on the? Yeah on our pages. Okay, great, great. Uh, that was quick. And I, I just wanna remind people per my email that our August meeting will be in person. Uh, so we will meet at the town hall. Okay. Okay, do we have anything else to, uh, to discuss tonight or have we had enough? Go oh, ahead. Hey, quick Your question parent. on quick question on the um the the meeting. I'm wondering whether somebody can pick me up because I will not have a car um, and be able to get there because Joe will be in town with the car at work. So um, I can get you, Karen. Okay. Okay. Thanks, John. Just remind me. Okay. I mean, are we still planning to have the Zoom option? So if your car is not available, you can just zoom in. Well, my car will never be available. We only have one car. I guess what I'm saying is, are we are we gonna keep the option for Zoom open for people who need it? If this, go ahead. You can, if you want. Uh, yeah, so as an advisory body, um, which maybe this will tip the, the scales in, in favor of you saying the CAC, but as an advisory body, um, you can uh, continue to meet virtually is my understanding, uh, if, you, if you wish. So um, there's no need for this board to, con room to meet in person unless you want to. So. Oh. That is the word from town council, so. So, so CJ, are you saying uh, this next meeting could be a hybrid meeting where if people want to Zoom, they can, and if they want to show up at the at the town hall, they can. Well, I can I can say that Monday night's planning board meeting was not the best meeting we've ever had. Yeah. Unfortunately, the AV yeah. isn't quite where it is. I would frankly encourage people to either meet in person or meet virtually and for now until we can get the av maybe more finely tuned in at the town you can continue to meet in person i don't or virtually i don't want to discourage you because i'm sure maybe you want to you know say hello and everything I, I don't mean to discourage you from meeting in person just that all the bugs aren't quite mm, are ironed out yet in the hybrid approach let's just put it that mm -hmm. way yeah that was that was my impression we also heard from andra um and she felt like in-person meetings um, were much more preferable uh, in, in terms of the interpersonal connection. Um, so she was really hoping that this meeting could be in person, but I think Tom, CJ and I kind of prevailed with keeping it virtual for now. Uh, it sounds like Robin's saying, yes, she would show up in person. Uh, maybe I mean, I'm happy to meet in person. I just think if, we should make the option available for people who who can't even if you know if it's just me putting zoom on the, my laptop and bringing karen in I, I just i think it'll take time before everybody's available and ready to come back that's cool but i would be there in person and I'm assuming this July 12th meeting is, is an in-person meeting, right? Yes. Okay. I'll yes. be there in, in person as best as I can. Thanks, Todd. That's great. So we'll lead it that it, for the next meeting, it's in person. But with a Zoom option. If you can't make it, then we'll have a Zoom option. And if you could let us know, that would be helpful. 
just to, you know, help us prepare. There'll definitely be a Zoom option. Uh, I know you guys want to get going, but one last thing is tomorrow I'll be circulating the T town's TMDL draft comments to you. So to you, the Agricultural uh, and Farmland Protection Committee, as well as uh, the Planning Board, and I think that's it, maybe town board as well. Um, just kind of the town's comments on that draft TMDL. So please feel free to mark up. They're kind of minimal, but we're mostly saying like, I don't know what we're supposed to really do with this document. Thanks very much. Uh, so yeah, um, so we'll circulate those around and feel free to add any comments that you'd like to. And I'm gonna submit them at close of business on July 8th, so a week from today. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move your chair. And a second. I second. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you everybody very much for coming tonight. It was very important to get that vote in. Thank you all. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank have a good evening, you everybody. You too, bye-bye. Thank you. Enjoy the decks, CJ. Thank you. Yeah. Happy Fourth, everybody. Yeah. To you too. yeah. Beautiful. Bye -bye.